Okay, welcome back. This is circular functions. This is going to be section 3.3. We've already talked a little bit about some of the different things that we're doing with degrees and radians, but now we're going to take it to the unit circle and learn where do we get these values on the unit circle. So here we go. If we start to look at circles, we are not talking about crop circles. This is not what we're talking about. We are going to talk about circular functions. And if we remember circular functions, we remember it looks like this. Y equals, it's going to be R squared equals X squared plus Y squared. Okay? So for our unit circle, this is all going to be 1. So the unit circle looks like this. x squared plus y squared equals 1. Now, notice that should look familiar because that was one of our trig identities. And so when we start talking about this unit circle, we have relationships here between the things that we've done and what we're doing. So let's look at this. If I have this radius of 1, and so all these values are going to be 1, here's what it looks like. If I'm going to draw in a triangle here, Okay, this is going to be my y because it's how tall it is. And my x is going to be here. Okay, and then this hypotenuse is going to be 1. Now, look at what this means. That means that this angle here is theta. So the cosine of theta is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse or x over 1, which is equal to x. Sine of theta is going to be equal to opposite over hypotenuse, which is equal to y. So, when I'm looking at my unit circle, my x and my y are really going to translate as this. They're going to be cosine, comma, sine theta. All right? And so, as your unit circle looked blank, it is now going to start to fill in. So let's look at what we've got here. If I finish this triangle once again, and I put my theta here, I'm going to put in my values. This is going to be y. This is going to be x. This will be 1. Cosine theta is equal to x over 1, which is x. Sine theta is going to be y over 1, which is y. Tangent theta is going to be opposite over adjacent, so it's going to be y over x. Cotangent is going to be x over y, as we have talked about before. Cosecant is going to be the opposite of sine, which is going to be 1 over y. And secant is going to be 1 over cosine, which is 1 over x. You're starting to see how these things are all related. Okay? So as we move into the unit circle, as I said, yours looked like this. Like this. It's filled in. Because notice, look at what we've got here, people. I've got these coordinates here. Well, this is really cosine theta comma sine theta. All right? So that's where we're at right now. So these coordinates are going to give us the cosine and the sine of these common angles, 30, 45, 60, et cetera, et cetera, as we go around and around. So how do we use this to solve for some of the values that we need? Let's check it out. If I'm saying find the 6 trig ratios of 5 pi over 6, this then becomes a matching game. Here's the matching game. Here's 5 pi over 6. Instead of saying, I'm going to draw that in, try to figure out what the degrees are, use our cosine and sine. Okay? So cosine is going to be negative. Square root of 3 over 2. Sine is going to be 1 half. Tangent is now going to be what was tangent going to be? If we look back here, look at how it relates. Y over X. So when I go back here, I'm going to have two fractions. So I'm going to pull this out to the side here. It's going to be Y over X. So we're going to have 1 half over negative square root of 3 over 2, which is going to be equal to 1 over square root 3. And it's going to be negative because this is negative, okay? You see how this works. So cotangent is going to be negative square root 3. 
cosecant is going to be 1 over sine, which is going to be 2, and secant is going to be 1 over cosine, which will be 2 over square root 3, and it's negative. I'm not doing complicated math here, people. I'm flipping them over. I'm not writing out 1 divided by. I'm flipping them over. Okay, so that's how this works. So I'm finding it on the unit circle and using my x and my y values to come up with what I want. So when I go to find all the values where cosine of t is equal to 1 half, we need to figure out what t is. t is equal to theta in radians. Okay? So t is theta in radians. So if I look at where the cosine is 1 half, I know that it goes cosine theta, comma, sine theta. So this is going to be my x. So find where x equals 1 half. So let's find it. Here's an x of 1 half. Here's an x of a negative 1 half half, so that's not going to work. So this one doesn't work because that's negative. And here's a neg oh, negative one half. That's not going to work. And here's another one half. There's four quadrant. It makes sense there will be four angles, but two of them are negative. So here's my answer. Okay. So t equals pi over 3. And t equals 5 pi over 3. Okay, these are my two values, where t is equal to 1 half, or the cosine of t is equal to 1 half between 0 and 2 pi. I don't need to keep going around because 2 pi is 360 degrees, okay, so 2 pi will be all the way around. All right, so that's how this works. I'm finding all of those values. Those are my values right there. So when they ask me which value, for which value pi over 2 to pi is sine theta square root of 3 over 2, I know that I'm looking from here to here, and that's it. Sorry, not there. Got carried away. Pi over 2 to pi, so here to here, is sine theta equal to square root of 3 over 2. So remember, it goes cosine theta, comma, sine theta. And so I'm going to need for my y to equal square root of 3 over 2. And let's look. I'm going to start on this side. So here's one. And here's one. So theta equals one of them is 60 degrees, and theta equals 120 degrees. Okay? That's how I go. All right? So this is pretty much straightforward. Okay? So I could say, um, that these are these are my values. This is where I'm this is where I'm working right now. Okay? I've got two choices though. I need to be in my interval. So this one here, it doesn't count because it's not in my interval. Remember, remember, remember. So 60's out, so I only have one value. Check your interval when you get done. Too much information? We can't have too much information because we have our interval here, okay? So let's try it again. Here's another one. Pi to 2 pi. So where's pi to 2 pi? Starts here, goes around this way, and it ends at 2 pi. So I'm in this area here. So sine is equal to negative 1. So remember, cosine theta, comma, sine theta. So I'm going to need y equals negative 1. Well, let's look. Um, I'm looking at all these. Hmm. I'm not seeing any y is equal to negative 1 in my angles, but look at this area here. What about this area here? Is this still an angle? Sure, it's still an angle. So I could say theta equals 270, or theta equals, and I could put it in radians, 3 pi over 2. Okay, so that's my answer. It's a matching game, people. That's all we're doing here is we're finding where the values are equal, okay? We're going to stay tuned here because day two is coming up after this video. So that's the basics of it, learning to use the unit circle to find the values that we want. This is our key right here, cosine theta, comma sine theta, and that's going to give us all the information that we need.
Thanks for watching.